November is Diabetes Awareness Month, but did you know um, that the number of kids, especially kids in our community, with type 1 diabetes is on the rise? Here to talk more about it um, is endocrinologist Dr. Jane Kim from Rady Children's Hospital. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Um, this is concerning to me. Do we know why the number of cases of type 1 diabetes in kids is increasing? No. Um, so, you know, at Rady Children's Hospital, my colleagues and I have seen a 20% increase. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> in the number of children that we treat with diabetes, with type 1 diabetes in the past five years. And, and what is most concerning to us is that the highest rate of increase is those, those youngest children, those children under five years of age. So, so try to imagine being a mother who has to inject her two-year-old with insulin three or more times a day, um, who has to poke their finger for a blood sugar check four or more times a day. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're going to get into treatments and all of that in a second, but let's just go back to the basics. What yeah. is the difference? between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes and why is it uh, more concerning for young kids? Yeah, so, um, you know, when, when we talk about diabetes, we broadly define them as either type 1 or type 2. And actually in children, unfortunately, both of them are on the rise. Um, specifically for type 1 diabetes, you know, um, we don't know why these youngest children are being most affected and that's why we think it's really important to do research for these kids. But type 1 is, uh, you said, insulin, it, it, it's, tell me, yes, tell me yes, the difference. Yes, yes, so, so in both conditions, the body is not making enough insulin. insulin. In type 1, the problem is that the immune system, instead of being activated against something foreign like a bacteria or a virus, it's actually attacked cells that make insulin so the body doesn't make it anymore. Wow. Um, type 2, it's a little bit different, but the body doesn't make enough insulin and it also doesn't use that insulin effectively. Wow. Okay, so um, you said 20% increase mm -hmm. in cases even mm -hmm. here in, mm -hmm. in our community. Yes. So what is the treatment? I mean, you, you touched on the treatment a little bit and what the parents have to go through to deal mm -hmm. with this in their small kids. Well, can it be treated? Can it be cured, type 1 diabetes? Yeah, so um, that's a really great question. You, you know, we are a ways from a cure. On the technology side, there have been some amazing advances for these families, uh, particularly with devices. So we have insulin pumps, we have continuous glucose monitors. There are companies that are linking these devices together. It's called an artificial pancreas. Um, but we have a ways to go for the cure, and that's why we think it's so important to learn more about these kids and do research to, to really find a cure for them. So tell me about your research. I know you are, you are part of a group that is really looking into the questions that we're asking this morning. Yeah, so I'm a diabetes doctor, but I'm also a research scientist at, at UCSD, and, um, and we're uh, just uh, launching a new program at Rady Children's that's called What Type of Type 1 Diabetes Does Your Child Have? And um, we're doing this in partnership with the Diabetes Research Connection. Um, this project is designed to really learn more about these kids so that we can tailor more effective treatment, uh, to tailor a customized treatment for each individual child. And the way that we're doing it is by creating a comprehensive database and biorepository. This just means a collection of biological samples that we can use for this project. And what's really um, important that, uh, is that we're going to use this research resource, we're going to use this information uh, to make it available to other researchers in the field to benefit a multitude of projects mm -hmm. moving forward to hopefully finding a cure for these kids. Um, I'm sure parents that are not familiar with diabetes are watching at home and thinking, can I prevent type 1 diabetes? You know, it is a complicated question. Um, you know, uh, right now, honestly, there is nothing to do to prevent the disease. Um, there are some research trials that are ongoing, so if you have a family member who already has diabetes, um, you can be screened, and if you're deemed to be at higher risk, um, you may be eligible for a treatment program for prevention, but it is unfortunately not really possible right now. All right, but if, if a parent does have a child with type 1 diabetes, I would suggest probably get involved in this research pro project with you, correct? Yes, so we would definitely welcome anybody who's interested interested, um, if you are interested in participating, um, if you are interested in supporting this work and donating, um, this research will not be possible without community support. We're working with the Diabetes Research Connection. Uh, very very lucky to be partnered with them. They are a local nonprofit that's headquartered here in San Diego, and their mission is to connect donors with innovative diabetes mm -hmm. research projects. Um, so um, the only way that we're going to find a cure is through the help and generosity of others. Um, and to learn more about this work, please go to their website, which is diabetesresearchconnection.org. Well, that number, 20% increase, is, is quite alarming. So we will continue to follow your work. Dr. Jane Kim, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. All right.